What's up guys? Chris VA Travels and welcome to Danville. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I drove three and a half hours to get here. I'm gonna be down here for a couple days checking out some sites. Uh, first stop on the list is the Sutherland Mansion, which was the last capital of the Confederacy. It's the uh, also the Danville Museum. So yeah, I'm gonna go grab a ticket. Check this place out. of the house and a plaque over here showing the front of the house as it looked in 1900 and yeah unfortunately I'm not gonna get be able to get very good drone footage with all these trees but yeah I'm about to do a walk around and here's the town of Danville they were all together six Union prisons uh, they converted a bunch of tobacco warehouses so Yeah, I'll go ahead and do my walk around. And yeah, to tell you, of course, like I had said, this was the Confederate capital between April 3rd and April 10th, 1865. When it happened, uh, Petersburg fell April 2nd. Uh, Robert Lee shot a, a telegraph to Jefferson Davis saying, hey, the lines broke, get out of Dodge. So he packed everything up, hopped on a train later that evening. It was right around midnight. Took a 16 hour train ride down here in uh, Danville he and his cabinet and set up shop and they were greeted by William Sutherland uh, the owner of the house he was a Virginia delegate mayor of the town something going on over there a bunch of guys with confederate flags um yeah some sort of maybe reenactment because there was a guy dressed up in some sort of confederate uniform back there yeah so uh, to let you know this house it's in the Italian villa style I haven't heard that one. <clears throat> I'm assuming it's uh, similar to Italian 8, uh, which was popular in the 1850s, 1860s. Kind of a cupola up there with not really a, a mansard roof. Um, I don't know, but you see all kind of the bracket, bracketing over there. I guess that was kind of the popular style in the Italy, I guess. Yeah, the front says the last capital of the Confederacy. Enter in the rear. Pretty neat decorative kind of little porch up there. Uh, pretty nice uh, wrought iron fence right here. And take a walk over and look at this sign. And so yeah, Jeff Davis stayed here for a week <laughs> before he got word that Robert E. Lee had surrendered out of Appomattox and there was nothing blocking the Union Army from closing in on Danville. So he hopped on the train again Set it south. Set it south to Greensboro. Yeah, I'll let you pause and read this sign. All right. Well, here's a good shot of the front, actually, and I might be able to fly my drone shooting right up here, maybe later on. But uh walk over there's some gardens over there pretty nice row of trees back there and actually there's a uh, sign over here I didn't see I'll walk over to that later but yes yeah, I walk to the gardens I'll tell you a little bit about William Sutherland as I said Danville mayor um, he owned the second largest tobacco factory in Virginia, and he was an innovator. He was the first in the air to use a, uh, a steam-powered hydraulic tobacco press. Um, so, like, you know, he owned about 36 slaves. And, yeah, oh, and he lived here uh, until his death, and I want to say it was 1893. And, yeah, 
Magnolia tree's got a, a little bit of bloom on it. So a bunch of rose bushes over here. Let's take a quick walk through. Oh yeah, and let you know, like I say, I'm gonna be uh, be here until tomorrow. And down this road right here, the main drag, Main Street, um, is Millionaire's Row. And there's a bunch of Victorian houses that were built and lived in by all the big textile and tobacco moguls from the late 19th century. Yeah, Rose Garden. Um, yeah, I'll just take a quick walk through. A bunch of birds just broke loose out of that magnolia. And yeah, these don't look too bad for November. Looks like these were kind of just pruned. All right. Gonna go check in. Tour. A ticket was ten dollars. Cool. And there he is, William Sutherland, owner of the house, 1859 until his death, 1893. And this is the plantation desk. Uh, it's named because of its popularity with Southern plantation owners. And doing my research, I had read Jeff Davis used this desk. Down here, an office chair made out of pine. <clears throat> Over here is an old cigar holder and a humidor. Pretty neat designs on it. It's a pretty neat cabinet. Uh, and this guy, Lieutenant Gay. fireplace closure you stick that on there during the summer just keep all the uh just bats birds insects or, and whatnot coming through pretty neat legs down on these and over here is a smoking jacket it wasn't owned by Sutherland, but it just it comes from the 1860s. It's just something they had acquired. And over here, some of the books he had owned. <clears throat> over here, this book goes back to 1614. It was owned by Caesar de Nostradamus. So I'm not sure what it has to do with the house, but pretty interesting. Baby cup, sterling silver. Uh, his wife, Jane, right there. They had two daughters. Another named Jane. And he was the quartermaster of Danville during the war. There was no battle in Danville and he couldn't physically fight in the battle. He was kind of a weakly man, but yeah, that was his job. Really old Webster dictionary. All right, oh, a cup board, early 1800s, Piedmont, North Carolina or Virginia, walnut or pine. There you go. All right, take a walk through the hallway. The light fixture up there, and an old book, The Origins of Christmas. And there used to be a stairwell in here that was removed. 
some biblical paintings and a really old sofa. Pause and read that later. Pretty nice chair. And this was Major Sutherland's bedroom and this is a picture of what it would have looked like. Old coat rack, hat rack. Don't know who this guy is. But yeah, the Sutherland family, wife Jane. And it was customary back in the during the Victorian era to leave your calling card when visiting. Walk over here. This is Miss Mary Aiken. And this mirror goes back to 1875. It's in really good shape for being that old. All right, take a walk in here. And this is a room dedicated to Jane, his wife. Um, looks like an old music box back there. And kind of a French cavalier looking guy right there. Not too many signs. Over here, a dress. Uh, obviously she would have worn. Another fireplace cover back there. It's kind of a turtle... Uh, Coffee table, very fancy sofa. And legacy of the Janes. There you go. So, there's Jane again. Um, so this has been converted, obviously, into a gift shop. was a hidden stairway. And while Davis was here for that week, he had armed guards up at the cupola that was on the top there. And if any Union soldiers were to approach, they would shoot word to Jeff Davis. He would sneak out of his bedroom downstairs, down these private stairs and make a run for it. So, and this is obviously the dining room. And back here, Afri African American classical and opera singer named, I can't read her name, Williams is the uh, last name. Pretty interesting, I'll walk through there later, but I'm gonna stick to the main portion of the house. And I'm now going to go upstairs. And if you can see the little kind of line in the floor right there, that's where the house originally ended. Add-on was built in the 1900s back there. It was a uh, used as a library. All right, how do I get upstairs? Uh, <laughs> and there's a really nice chandelier. Here we go. United Daughters of the Confederacy, bunch of medals. Jefferson Davis wore those John Lennon looking glasses, apparently. Oh, okay, so here's the Davis bedroom. Walk in here. There's a trunk. It's kind of a hat case. Armoire. Pretty nice headboard. A 
sofa, 19th century. I was believed to once be owned by Jeff Davis. And there's this little bathroom, I guess, where we would wash up. Different flags of the Confederacy. There he is right there. Looks pretty similar to Abraham Lincoln, actually. Confederate Veterans in Danville. And there's his timeline. I visited the White House of the Confederacy and I kind of went through his whole career. All right, I'll walk you through the history of the flags. I actually haven't read these. I just know from just reading it in the past. And this was the original stars and bars with the seven stars. I remember Virginia didn't uh, secede with the original batch. It was the Deep South that seceded late 1860 into early 1861. And it wasn't until after Fort Sumter, uh, the Union Army began to militarize that Virginia jumped in and joined. All right, so the story I had heard that that looked too much similar to the Union or the traditional American flag. So they went to this flag, which was more distinct. And then the way I was taught that they didn't like this because it looked like a surrender flag. There was too much white. <laughs> All right, so then this is right toward the end of the war. This is March. This is a month before it ended that they uh, settled on this flag the third national flag of the Confederacy. And <clears throat> over here is the traditional battle flag. That's the one that most people fly. And the Bonnie Blue was used in the very beginning. It goes back to when Florida seceded from Spain, uh, but it was flown over Jackson, Mississippi at the very start of the war. And it was for a time kind of the unofficial flag in the very beginning. And this goes, what does the flag symbolize? And yeah, um, obviously a lot of controversy about that. And This iron face right here, that's Stonewall Jackson. This medallion, this would be Robert E. Lee. And it looks like it comes off of this, uh, this obelisk. Uh, some Confederate money. And they've got some Union, I guess, Pittsburgh. Oh, Pennsylvania, sorry. Yeah, we're in Pennsylvania County. Yeah, there's that obelisk again. Over here, there's nothing really saying what this is from. There was no battle in Danville, but very old pillow. They don't have a sign on this. I think that's a pillow. Oh no, sorry, some sort of satchel or bag. All right, this desk here. Thomas Day was a free black cabinet maker born in Halifax. This armoire going back to 1875 from the Piedmont region. And back here, they're having a daughter, uh, Daughters of the Confederacy meeting, which I wish I could go in that room. There's a lot of good stuff in there. This hut board from North Carolina. Um, fishing boats after a storm by Gene Joseph Wirtz. Velocipede, old tricycle. The sampler going back to 1836 uh, to the yeah, Sutherlands. Um, they had left out X, Y, and Z. Looks like down in the middle there. And here's the porch. Oh, and uh, a lady had fallen off of this. Somebody's stepmother. The lady wasn't exactly sure who it was, but she had leaned over the railing, fell to her death. So that's pretty sad. And encyclopedia going back to 1880. Wedding dress. Annie Josephine Williams wore this brown silk wedding dress. And she married Stephen John Davis. 
I wonder, hmm. a little umbrella right there. And yeah, this house is really well furnished. I was surprised. Wheelchair over here. And some Rococo on top of that mirror. A lot of armoires up here. Gophering iron. Used to press cuffs, collars, and ruffles. All right. And looks like some original brick up there. Pretty neat. Just take a quick walk back here. They've got this set up as a museum for Camilla Williams. Uh, born, of course, here in Danville. She was an opera singer. She shattered racial barriers by becoming the first African-American woman to receive a contract from a major United States opera company. Take a walk back here. I guess she dressed like one of these geisha girls, I guess. Uh, one of her operas. That's kind of cool. Some African or Egyptian uh, costuming. Some sheet music, Madam Butterfly. Southern segre segregation. Juilliard School of Music, 1954. Porgy and Bess. She debuts in Europe, 1954, so. All right, so now you know a little bit about Camellia Williams and just to let you know, there are uh, some pretty notable people from here in Danville. Uh, Lady Astor actually was born here and the Gibson girl, they were sisters. And Lady Astor was the first female to be elected to British Parliament. I wanna say that was 1922, kind of crazy. And uh, her sister was the Gibson girl. She was a famous kind of pinup. She was kind of the Cindy Crawford of her time, uh, just before World War I. And they had a house here in town called the Langhorn House that was giving tours before COVID. Closed down, never reopened. But. All right, guys, getting out of here. And that's it for the Sutherland House. As always, like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram. If you want to help me get out to more of these places, you can support me on Patreon. See ya.